Uh, I first came up with the idea for a free encyclopedia for everyone and uh, created a project called Newpedia. Uh, same vision, free encyclopedia for everybody. Uh, but we didn't really have the, the understanding of social communities online and so forth. So it was a very top-down model, uh, more academic than Britannica. Uh, Seven-stage review process to get anything published. And this failed. One of the reasons it failed was that although many, many people were very excited, by the time we uh, moved to the Wikipedia model, there were something like 5,000 people on our uh, email mailing lists and things who had signed up for the project. They had a user account, uh, but they were too intimidated to write by the system. It was too hard to get involved. Uh, and so for volunteers, although they were inspired and wanted to help, uh, we put up so many barriers to, to them being able to help. Uh, that it didn't work. So we learned about the, the concept of a wiki. Uh, of course, the wiki uh, is not something that I invented. Uh, the wiki was first invented by a guy named Ward Cunningham. Uh, and the interesting thing here is that he invented the first wiki in 1995, six years before the founding of Wikipedia. And all the technology for Wikipedia uh, existed for six years. We had the web browser, we had the web server, we had database. Uh, those th things are much older. But even the concept of wiki, of a website anyone can edit, which is a very simple concept in one sense, but Ward Cunningham had to think it up, uh, that it all existed for six years. And it was functional and online. Uh, and yet, um, you know, because of this, I would say Wikipedia is a, not a technological innovation, it's a social innovation. Uh, the older wiki communities tended to hide from the search engines. Uh, there was a belief that if you let too many people come and visit your wiki, they would destroy it. Um, and actually with good cause. Some of the early wikis were actually almost like uh, a performance art in a sense. There was no way, you know how in Wikipedia, if you click on the history, you can go back and see every version of the article in the past. M many of the original wikis, when you clicked uh, the history, there was no history. So if you change something, uh, usually they, they kept two or three versions. You change something, if a malicious person came and made three edits to a page and wiped the page out, you actually lost things. And so there was sort of a, I mean, I remember reading one person's sort of very eloquent essay about, can something as fragile as this really survive? The answer is pretty much no. Um, but what we did is we said, oh, let's save all the history. And uh, that made the wiki much more robust. Um, but people needed time to learn, to build the social mechanisms. Even though the technology existed, nobody really quite knew how you could bring a community together, uh, a, a mainly beneficial community, positive community, really trying to build something for the common good, not just to generate into spam and flame wars and so forth. So now I'm taking a look at the same kind of concept, and I'm thinking about video. Um, other than a few hints here and there, uh, video is in the same state today that text was in 1999. And what I mean by this is that YouTube might as well be GeoCities. How many people remember GeoCities? It was a free homepage provider. It was quite, I mean, for many, many people and that masses of people who came online, it was the first real chance that people had to put up their own web page. And I remember, actually, one of the inspirations for Wikipedia, there were many, but one was there was this really fabulous... Um, uh, Beatles fan page. A guy had written like 50 pages all about the Beatles. And it was sort of almost a classic thing that you would see on GeoCities. You would see on the front page of a site, I'm so sorry I haven't updated lately. I promise I will. And that would be uh, dated two years prior. Um, that when you have just individual people working on projects, they, 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 get, they move away from it. They, get, they did the Beatles for a while. They got tired of it. They moved on. Um, it's fun, but it's mainly individual contribution. Uh, and so I think that's really important. Another thing I want you to think about in, th in thinking about the, the future of video and the internet is an analogy to tennis and chess. The greatest tennis players tend to start at a very young age. Uh, the same thing for the greatest chess players. Uh, to become really, really skilled at something does take a lot of effort, a lot of time, uh, really a, a native fluency with the technology. Um, when I was a kid, it was insanely expensive to produce home video, so no kids were able to touch it. Uh, I wasn't, you know, we, we couldn't even take pictures with a camera. Later, you know, I had a few bucks and my mom would let me take some pictures. But in terms of what kids are able to do today, uh, it's completely different. My daughter is 11 years old. She has an HD camera. She's had it for quite some time now. Um, and she has social companies on the internet that only the most tech-savvy adults have. So they have cameras from a very young age. Uh, my daughter, um, well, I, I came here mainly to brag about my daughter. She won the local county award for her video editing last year. Um, and, you know, basically she just used iMovie, and uh, frankly her movie about how to train a cat is not going to win an Academy Award. Um, but the editing was much better than what I could do because I've never bothered to become very fluent in iMovie. Um, but the point is, the kids coming up today are uh, very fluent in all of this.